snacks. We do grocery haul after grocery haul after grocery haul, but we want to make sure that you understand different sections of the grocery store so you don't have to watch an hour-long video talking about the whole grocery store. So we're going to break down snacks, and today we're at a Sprouts Farmer's Market, which is like a Southern California kind of West Coast store, but a lot of the things I'm going to talk about are going to apply anywhere. You can get them at regular grocery stores, Whole Foods, whatever. So we're going to break down different things in the chip aisle, the cracker aisle, the cookie aisle, things that you actually do eat, but maybe you shouldn't. We'll give you what you should be paying attention to. All right, so when you're doing keto, you're doing any kind of low carb, there's not a whole lot of bar options. So I wanna start with just the on the go stuff because if I look at all the questions that I get, people are usually asking, okay, when I'm on the road, what can I grab? So we're gonna grab a few things just to take a look and just give you some examples. Um, okay, a good example is gonna be a Think Thin bar. I used to consume these all the time, not knowing what was really in them, okay? So here's some of the ingredients we have. Okay, we have a protein blend. So in this case, pea protein, brown rice protein, pumpkin protein, which I really dig the fact they're using pumpkin protein because that's a pretty diverse amino acid profile there. Uh, but then we have maltitol. That is a hardcore sugar alcohol. So whenever you're looking at these bars, you want to look for things like maltitol, for uh, isomalt, things like that. Okay, and I can talk about that and give another list in another video. Vegetable glycerin, that's not a big deal. That's just usually what they use somewhat as a thickener. Uh, so not a big deal. Dark chocolate coating, there's where we have a problem. Cane sugar, chocolate liquor, cocoa butter. <laughs> Um, almonds, alkalized cocoa, that's all good. Sunflower oil, sunflower lecithin. So overall pretty clean, but the big glaring issue here is maltitol. And that's why when you look at the label, you see 27 grams of carbohydrates, okay? So you're like, where is it coming from? There's five grams of sugar, three grams of carbs. Well, a lot of it is coming from the sugar alcohols, which if you look, depends on who you talk to, but they're gonna say those don't count towards your carb content. They do. Sugar alcohols technically still have carbohydrates and they technically still have calories, okay? So you have to be really careful with those, so I usually avoid that. I really like the taste of Think Thin, I just wish that they had figured that out. Okay, now let's take a look at some of these more, uh, uh, let's take a look like the vegan ones, okay, right? Because Garden of Life is a really well-known vegan brand. Is this gonna work on keto? No, right out the gate, it's already not. 36 grams of carbohydrates is gonna be the first thing that you look at. But let's take a look at what we've got in here. Organic tapioca, which quite frankly is a pretty cheap way to fill up a bar. So if you look at a bar and you see just tapioca right out the gate, that's probably something you don't wanna be having. Uh, and then we have, so it's tapioca syrup and soluble fiber. So basically they're using it just to fill you up. Organic peanuts, not the end of the world. Pea protein, if it's pea protein isolate, that'd be great, but we don't know, probably not because it doesn't say it. So if it doesn't say pea protein isolate, then it's probably just the plain old concentrate, which means they're taking all the cruddy parts, the fibers, everything like that. You always want the whey protein isolate or the pea protein isolate or et cetera, et cetera, isolate, because it means they're isolating the protein out of it, okay? And we have uh, cocoa nibs, all good, organic erythritol. Okay, I'm okay with that. More tapioca fiber, cocoa butter, organic stevia extract. Okay, so a lot of organic ingredients, which is great, but it doesn't matter. It can be organic sugar, it can be organic tar. I mean, it's, it's still gonna be a problem. So definitely not keto friendly. Also think that it's filled with cheap ingredients. So not the end of the world, but still. I mean, not one that I would get. And then let's see, what else we have here? Okay. Um, Okay, these get asked about a lot. Uh, the Bulletproof brand. Okay, Bulletproof bars. Let's see what we got here. Okay, 14 grams of carbohydrates. So to the naked eye, that doesn't look like it'd be keto friendly, but technically, since they have certain fibers and things in there, they call themselves keto friendly. Okay, cashew butter. Here's the thing. Cashew butter is okay, but on keto, cashews are pretty inflammatory. And I'm actually surprised that Dave Asprey has these in here in his Bulletproof brand because cashews are pretty inflammatory. They're technically a fruit. They operate a little bit differently in the body. So I wouldn't usually go with cashew butter, although it does taste good. Okay, so he's got grass-fed collagen. He's got um, inulin. Okay, so pretty good stuff. So really not bad. So I would get one of these if it was, you know, the right kind of situation. So what I'll do is I'll grab, grab just one of these. That way we can do, hey, word to the wise, when you're doing grocery haul videos, be respectful, don't be rude, buy the things that you're talking about. That way you're not just being a scumbag that's coming into a store, filming there, and then leaving and not buying anything. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna buy one of these because I talked about it. That way we can get some videos of it. And maybe there's some nice people we can give them to, okay? Let's get one of these. Wait, I don't wanna get this lady's baby on the camera. All right, you guys have probably seen me talk about Susie's Good Fats before. Uh, it's awesome that they have these at Sprouts now. 
Here's the thing, Susie's has a plant-based option, yeah, plant-based options, non-plant-based options, and then they have their newer ones, which are really clean. Let's see. So same kind of situation. Okay, we've got a good amount of fibers. So this is 14 grams of carbs, but see nine grams of fiber. So you still get a little bit of the sugars in there, not the huge into the world. Okay, this is what I like about Susie's. Okay, when it starts out, the fats blend. It's literally just a blend of fats to start out. Sunflower seed butter, okay, palm sterin, which means it's the steric acid coming from palm oil, coconut oil, then white chocolate flavored coating. We have inulin, which is just a fiber. We've got palm kernel and palm oil, milk protein isolate, remember, isolate, it's isolated. Okay, so really clean stuff. Now, the one thing that you know some people will poke holes in is yes, they technically, even in the flavored chips, they have a little bit of cane sugar in there. But the thing is, is the purpose of these bars isn't necessarily to be a keto bar, it's to help people get off of sugar, which I think is really cool. It's to help people transition out of their sugar habit and get into a little bit more of a healthy lifestyle. So it kind of indoctrinates them away from that. So I think they've just done a really, really good job. So if you have sprouts nearby, I recommend getting these Love Good Fats bars. They really are good. So I'm gonna grab one of the cookies and cream flavor, vanilla, and then I'm gonna grab one of the plant-based because that's what's cool. So these have like whey protein in them. These use more of a pea. So it's really cool, a nice little blend there. So if you have a Sprouts nearby, check them out. Uh, since I do talk about them in my other videos, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below in the uh, description as well. That way you can check them out online too. Let's just look at one more bar just to give you a good example. And then we'll head on over to like the chip aisle. RX bars. Okay, so the thing is, is these definitely aren't keto friendly. Okay, first ingredient, dates. Then we have egg whites, hazelnuts, cashews, chocolate, cocoa, natural flavors. Dates are pure fructose. So people ask me all the time about dates and what I think about them. Are they a clean carb? Not really. They're clean in the sense that they come from fruit, but, sorry, sorry, hey, sorry. So they're clean in the sense that they come from fruit, but here's the thing that you have to remember fruit goes straight to the liver it's fructose so which means it's easier to kick you out of keto with fructose than it is with anything else so you want to be really really careful and even if you're not keto if you're someone that's just eating clean you are almost better to get a a fiber or a good starch than you are to get just fructose that's coming from dates okay it can really mess you up so are these the worst thing in the world no that's actually a pretty clean profile it's just not something that i would necessarily recommend if you're trying to live a low carb lifestyle and you're trying to have the least metabolic impact in terms of how carbohydrates affect your body. So I do like kind bars. They're not keto friendly. I mean, there's a lot of things I do like here and I think the bar world has changed, but everyone and their brother has a bar now and it makes it really, really tough to figure it out. So I try to go for ones that have science behind them and understand a little bit more how the body works from a metabolic standpoint. Okay, here we have some other little things. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about kale chips for a second. Why are we here? Kale chips by and large, aren't really bad. We just have to look at what's in some of them. Uh, these rhythm superfoods, here's a good example. Um, organic kale, organic sunflower seeds, organic tahini, organic carrot, organic apple cider vinegar, a little bit of cane sugar, onion, sea salt. This is really, really clean. This is really, really clean. See, I like that they're using tahini. They're using sesame seeds. So you're getting a nice omega, actually a, in this case, a particular unsaturated fat. So a monounsaturated fat that's gonna be really good coming from tahini. Some of the things I want you to be careful of, uh, let's see if I can find one that's got it. I still just use tahini, that's great. Good on rhythm. I'm gonna grab one of those. Kale, sunflower seeds. Okay, so I don't like it when they use cashews. Again, for the same reason, right? So we have cashews as sort of the, the thickener to give them that creamy consistency. So just be a little bit weary of ones that have a bunch of cashew in them. This one's cool. Kale, sunflower seeds, lemon juice, chickpea miso. So rice, chickpea, sea salt, koji spores, nutritional yeast. This is really good clean stuff too. I haven't seen this one. So they're using, uh, for the cheese, they're using cheese, they're using nutritional yeast, which I talk about in a lot of my videos, use nutritional yeast to give things kind of a cheesy taste. So that's really, really cool. Um, I guess they don't have the ones that I really would have bad things to say about. I get weary of the ones that use like cashew butter because they add so much calories to them. So here's what you have to be careful of. So you would think this is just kale, right? Okay, well we got two servings, 80 calories, so 160 calories in this bag, which seems like a lot when it's just kale, right? That's because they're usually adding sunflower seed oil, they're usually adding tahini, things that are oil-based because that's how they actually roast them and get it to get crispy and then give it that consistency. So you just have to be really careful there. Wow, this is cool though. Naked. I'm gonna assume this is just 
Nah, see, even this, naked. I thought that it was gonna be just dried kale, but they still have cashews, they still have all that other stuff. In fact, what's funny is the cheesy flavor has less calories than naked. It just goes to show you how they play on marketing, right? Naked, oh, it's gonna be cleaner, it's gonna be healthy, but it has more calories because they're trying to make naked taste better by adding a little bit more fat to it so that people get conditioned to like naked and think they're eating healthier when they're actually consuming more calories. So I'm gonna grab this just because we can take a look at the ingredients later. Let's go ahead and let's blaze on through. There's so much to see here. If there's specific things that you want to see more of, put them down in the comment section below because I just don't wanna waste everybody's time with a super long video. So here in this snack section, um, this is just a world of hurt for a lot of people. And I could spend a lot of time here just telling you exactly what you should avoid, but the thing is we'd be here all day. So I just wanna break apart a few of the things that I noticed that stand out to me. I've noticed these Sahali snacks before and they are delicious, they're very deceiving. If you're doing keto, these aren't going to work for you. Okay, look at, we've got pistachios, which are already probably the highest carbohydrate nut. We've got almonds, none of which are organic. And then we go straight into dried apples, which is gonna be straight up concentrated fructose, concentrated sugar, right? So definitely not something we wanna have. Plus they have organic cane sugar. What's the purpose in adding organic cane sugar if you're not even using organic pistachios and organic almonds? Okay, the nuts themselves are going to be ones that you really have to pay attention to, to be organic. Pistachios, you may think they have a shell. So, oh, what's the big deal? Well, guess what? Okay, they spray these trees, they put pesticides, herbicides on it, and then the shells fall to the ground. Everything still leaches through and up through the tree into the nut itself. So it's interesting. So now they're charging a premium because there's all these organic ingredients in here, but then they don't even bother with the part that's the most important. So, okay, great, we just have something that's totally toxic, but then we sprinkle a little bit of organic sugar on it and make it fine. I just don't like that and I don't agree with that. So the things you wanna be paying attention to, it's better off to get savory things that are not sweetened, and if you wanna make them sweet, make them sweet yourself. Get regular almonds and then uh, add a little bit of stevia to them and roast them up with a little bit of oil, and that way you're sweetening your almonds without sugar, you're sweetening them with stevia, right? Okay, so the point is you can always make things work. I don't want to even address just the things that are high sugar, right? We don't even need to go there. Um, but I will say with things like dried fruit, again, you're taking that fructose, which goes straight to the liver. We can only hold about 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrates in our liver before it goes through de novo lipogenesis and it starts to spill over and store its fat. So keep that in mind because when you look at like, if you're going to eat fruit, I'd rather you just eat a whole fruit than eat this because look at three, we've got almost 90 grams of carbohydrates in this bag and this is three ounces. Like this will practically fly away. I could tie a balloon to it and it'll take off. Okay, and you're well over what your liver can handle in the way of carbohydrates in terms of sugar and fructose. So it's gonna store a lot easier. So you just have to be careful with things like that. Um, I wanna address this and I'm not here to throw them under the bus, but I just, I have some serious concerns because the keto industry talks about these a lot. And this scares me. Total carbohydrates, 35 grams. Okay, but then dietary fiber, 28. 28 grams of fiber, I mean, I hate to say bloat city, but that's gonna send you to bloat city, right? That's a lot of fiber. And it's all a prebiotic soluble fiber from tapioca, so it's inexpensive. So I don't wanna bag on them because I know they're doing good things in the industry and I like the message that they're spreading, so please don't get me wrong. But I don't understand how people are not um, recognizing how bloated they get from this. And that really is disrupting digestion, okay? To the point where you wanna make sure that you're not having this copious amount of soluble fiber because at the end of the day, yes, it slows digestion, which is good for blood sugar, but it also is slowing the absorption of the important things. It, and when we look at the big picture of health and everything that we're after, we're not here just trying to reduce the absorption of macronutrients and calories. Okay, we're trying to reduce our caloric intake while maximizing the nutrients we absorb so we can be vibrant, we can be healthy, and we can live for a long time. So don't just consume something because it has a lot of fiber and it's a fear, uh, free food or a guilt-free food because it's gonna end up just kind of, I don't know, I digress. Anyhow, let's move on. Okay, so then we look at some of these things. When I'm not doing keto, because yes, I do weave in and out of keto, I actually eat a lot of uh, chickpea snacks. Now they don't really have the brand that I usually use, but chickpea snacks really low glycemic. And these are something you can actually get away with having a little bit of when you're not on, uh, when you are on keto. Okay. So you have, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, 55 chickpeas would be a lot, but maybe have like a little handful of 20 chickpeas and that'll get you maybe eight grams of carbohydrates or so. Uh, six of which, you know, obviously we hear here in this case, you know, you're going to look at 
a couple grams of fiber. Point is, is if you need a little bit of fiber, you need a little bit of pick-me-up, these are pretty solid. And this brand isn't bad either. So we've got chickpea snacks, so we've got chickpeas, sunflower oil, which wouldn't be the best oil, but still not bad. Um, let's see, broad beans. Broad beans are interesting because the broad beans are a little bit higher in fiber, a little bit higher in protein than chickpeas. But in my opinion, you have a little bit more of a, uh, just a better fatty acid profile that you're gonna get from chickpeas than you do from broad beans, uh, broad beans, excuse me. Um, I'm curious about these broad beans. So also known as fava beans. The cool thing about fava beans, just so that you do know, is they naturally increase dopamine. So you'll notice when you eat uh, any kind of broad beans or fava beans that you feel satiated. So that's a big plus side here. I just like the fatty acid profile of chickpeas better. Um, I don't like that they add rice flour uh, just in the seasoning. You gotta be careful there. Let's see. Oh, these are just a trick. Just be very careful. I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. Cheese stars, but all they are are cheese along with wheat flour. <laughs> it's basically a cheese it uh, If you're gonna go for snacks, these little cheese kind of sticks, cheese bars, things like this, are great if you're doing keto. But you just gotta remember, okay, look at the ingredients. Okay, so here we've got brown rice also, organic oat bran, sesame seeds, that's fine. Um, poppy seeds, it's all good. But why are they having to add oat bran and brown rice to cheese? Okay, it just doesn't make sense. They're trying to bind it together. And I don't know, and I'm from Sonoma originally, so I'm not trying to again throw them under the bus. I'm just confused as to why you have to add this when you can just have straight up cheese. Let's see if the other ones have that. Okay. This, is, that's interesting. Okay, so it might have something to do with the fact that it's just an everything version. Milk, salt, because this one doesn't have it. This one has the thing, and we're gonna get this one just so we can look at ingredients. So I would approve that. Okay, these we have to be really careful with. Cauliflower stalks, cauliflower pretzels, butternut squash pretzels, leads you to believe that once again, it's made straight up from cauliflower because everyone's jumping on the cauliflower bandwagon, but look at this. The first ingredient is cassava, which isn't bad, but that is not cauliflower. Okay, and then we've got expeller press canola or saffron sunflower oil, excuse me. So expeller press, that's good. It's gonna be a little bit cleaner. Then we go down to cauliflower, random third ingredient then right back to rice flour, then whole grain brown rice flour, then sorghum and sea salt. Not exactly, well, not exactly bad, but not exactly cauliflower, okay? So this is a perfect example. So I'm gonna grab one of these just so you have an example of like a little sneaky food that sniff, uh, gets into people's carts. And where people fall victim is that is usually like um, a mom that's trying to do good and she's picking up stuff for her kids, right? She's trying to pick the right foods. So she doesn't want to get the typical chips or typical crackers, so she gets the cauliflower ones. And then lo and behold, it's not a whole lot better. However, I will say it is better. So don't let me nitpick too much. Let me grab some of these chickpeas just so that we can have some. Grab a simple one. Let me grab these fava beans. Um, these love corn things, definitely stay away from those. Pure grains that are gonna be a little hard on your body. Uh, moon cheese. The thing I like about moon cheese is super simple ingredients, right? We've got pretty much just a couple ingredients. We've got enzymes, cheese, some vegetable coloring. Uh, again, we just have to factor in how much we're gonna add up in calories. Would I take this over this? Yes, this is less processed. So let's go ahead and grab these. And these are pretty common. So on keto, yes, these are gonna be fine. And so many snacks. Okay, parm crisps, we end up back in the same world. Uh, the Sonoma Creamery ones, these are just the same thing that we got in a bar, just in a simple crisp there. Uh, we run into the same world again with beet crackers. See, oh, so beet crackers. No, they're pretty much just a corn chip. Yep, stone ground white corn, sunflower oil, and then somewhere along the line, there's organic red beet in there. Really kind of sad, same kind of thing with sweet potato. We just gotta be careful there. Again, these crackers, I have yet to really find crackers that are really, really able to hold their like volume and actually hold their stability while not having some of these other garbage components in it. Um, nut thins, we should address this. It's easy again to think these are gonna be made straight from almonds. Nope, first ingredient's rice flour. And rice is so high glycemic, okay? So you consume rice, it's a very high glycemic. It's gonna spike your insulin. That means what you consume from this could very easily just get absorbed um, in a bad way, right? So we just have to be super careful. You're almost better to have something that's just low glycemic and a simple gluten-free cracker. Word to the wise, 
if you're trying to get healthy, cut out the gluten, trust me, okay? There are some studies that show there could be a potential link between different proteins and antibodies that are released within your body surrounding uh, the consumption of glu uh, gluten. Okay, so we just wanna be careful there. These flackers, one of my favorites, let's see. Let me show you here. Okay, yeah. Okay, so the difference with, no, we'll just wait. Oh. Hi. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm awesome. so happy to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, wait a minute. I think I hear his voice. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're like trying not to get kicked out. Just like, <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Right. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Okay. Okay. So flackers I'm a big fan of. Uh, the difference, uh, one's just a toasted, one's not. Okay, so organic flax seeds, apple cider vinegar, garlic powder, onion powder, super clean. So we're straight up flax seeds. I'm just gonna get the regular ones. The toasted ones are more or less the same, but here's why flax is not bad. People say, oh, flax, it's a phytoestrogen. Do we really wanna have flax seed because it is estrogenic? And I know I use air quotes a lot. I probably overuse them, sorry. Here's the thing. You'd have to eat a lot of flax to really have it be a problem. And the amount of fiber, the amount of nutrients, and the amount of omega-3s in the way of alpha linoleic acid that you get from these kind of like flax and chia is awesome. And if you can get it in a cracker form, very, very satiating, plus it's gonna help keep you regular, it's good stuff. But there's some interesting evidence that now shows that if you consume uh, curcumin, not saying that you have to do it right here, right now, but just fun fact, curcumin in combination with flax or in combination with chia helps the bioavailability of the alpha linoleic acid to convert into the usable form of omega-3. What that simply means is normally when you get omega-3s from plant sources, it actually doesn't have a whole lot of effect on your body. So don't listen to what people say. Like a bunch of omega-3s coming from flax isn't gonna do you much good. But the cool thing is if you have a little bit of curcumin or turmeric, it actually increases the conversion of the alpha linoleic acid into the usable form that your brain can use. So that's just a fun fact. So does it mean it's bad to consume flax? No, it just means it's kind of net neutral. Uh, so in that case, a really good simple thing to have. Okay, I'm gonna blaze through some of the chips here for a second. Okay, so this is not keto at all, but I wanna address this. Uh, Siete has done a really good job. Their chips are made with cassava flour and they cook them in avocado oil. So they're not using canola oil, they're not using the garbage. And then they have coconut flour, ground chia seeds and salt. So talk about just like a really clean chip, like honestly. It's, it, I'm not the biggest fan of having a lot of snack foods around because I know that it conditions your mind to just wanna graze and eat. But I appreciate the heck out of companies that are really going the extra mile and getting clean stuff. And the thing is, the pricing is still not bad. Okay, not great. I mean, $4.79 for a bag of chips compared to, you know, $1.99 for Doritos, yeah, totally. But I mean, look at the ingredient profile. So get one of these. Um, and it looks like Sprouts has tried to kind of do their own. Yep, so Sprouts has done kind of a knockoff. Uh, cassava flour, avocado oil, coconut flour, lime seasoning. Yeah, pretty much the exact same thing for half the price. So the point is, is people are catching on, but Siete kind of set the pace for it. It's still just really, really cool. So I'm gonna grab one of these too. Again, totally not keto, but something that if you're just trying to have healthier snacks around the house for the family that's not keto, you're good to go there. There's so much, dude. It's like, I could do like freaking five hour video here. I've got like three employees just come by and like smile and like, I shop here enough. All right, so these are an interesting one. So chicken chips. There's a lot of these weird companies out here that are doing, um, they'll take chicken, they'll take beef, they'll take whatever, and they'll try to make like a chicken chip or a pig chip or whatever. But then you actually look in the ingredients and you find, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of other stuff. This one, let's see, wild brand. So chicken chips, so natural chicken tapioca flour. Okay, so basically what they've taken done of this, they've taken chicken, they've probably dehydrated it, mashed it up, and mixed it with tapioca flour to give it some body. Uh, I understand it's really, really difficult and would be really expensive to just dehydrate chicken and sell it as a chip, so I understand having to give it a different consistency by blending it with tapioca. Uh, but again, we run into that tapioca starch. I have a feeling that we're gonna start developing allergies and issues with tapioca in the same way that we have with gluten uh, and wheat because of the overconsumption of it. Uh, just what it's doing in terms of the immune system, uh, it could be rough. So I, I hate seeing all this tapioca. It's still kind of a cool thing. It's just, again, it's not really in the realm of keto, 
but it would be in the realm of paleo low carb. So I'd be okay with that. So let's go ahead and grab one of those. This is interesting. I would kind of consider this a pretty deceptive name. Pig out, but they're pigless banking chips. So they, <laughs> it's, let's see what the ingredients are. They're using mushrooms, mushrooms, safflower, sunflower oil, modified food starch, cane sugar, maltodextrin, okay, a bunch of garbage pretty much, to make a, uh, to make a, a vegan friendly, like, I, I don't just don't understand. Like if, if I was vegan, which I'm not, I don't know if I'd really necessarily want to be consuming something that is pretending to be a pig. Like it kind of defeats the purpose, right? Um, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna bother getting that. Uh, people do ask about Quest chips all the time. Will they work on a keto diet? To some degree, but 500 calories per bag. Again, pretty dang light. And I'm sorry, but that ingredient list scares the ever-living daylights out of me. Protein blend, okay, milk protein isolate, that's great. Whey protein isolate, that's not bad. High oleic sunflower oil, not too bad. But then all of a sudden we get into calcium caseinate, cornstarch, natural flavors. Oh, natural flavors is pretty high up on the list, and that kind of scares me a little bit. Soluble corn fiber, psyllium husk, so they're just putting fiber in there. Uh, salt, and then a bunch of stuff in the seasonings. So not unbelievably terrible, but enough to probably send you, like I usually say, on a quest to the toilet, but these aren't as bad as like, say they're bars and stuff like that. Okay, we're gonna touch on some pork rinds and some popcorn really quick. Uh, you can always get lower calorie popcorn. The thing is, you're still taking a grain that has been puffed, and every time you take a grain and puff it, what's happening is the glucose uh, chains that are normally bound together really tightly, the chart as a starch, you inflate it, you pop it, and they separate and it becomes a high glycemic starch. So basically you take a corn that would normally be relatively low glycemic and you turn it into something that's high glycemic. So that means if you are gonna have popcorn, you wanna make sure it's as low fat as possible because otherwise you can't avoid the fact that popcorn is gonna spike your insulin and make it so that whatever else is coming in with it is going to potentially store as fat. So we just wanna be careful with that. And usually we're looking at most popcorns, let's take a look at one that's not, um, not considered lean, well, most of the stuff here at Sprouts is pretty healthy, so let's see. Yeah, okay, for example, um, per serving, still have eight grams of fat. We have popcorn, sunflower oil, cane sugar. Okay, so you wanna go with a lean one. So no matter what, so what you can do though, and something that I've done, is take regular popcorn that's really clean and lean, and this is again, if you're not on keto, take a little bit of apple cider vinegar in a little bit of water and put it in a little spray bottle, okay? and then spray it gently. It's gonna kind of get the popcorn a little soggy, or you can use, um, well, some people use white vinegar, but it doesn't really matter. And then take a little bit of stevia or a little bit of monk fruit and sprinkle it on there and make your, and then toss it up and make your own kettle corn. That's a really good thing to do. But if you use oil, then of course you're adding fat to it along with a high glycemic, mixing a fat and a carb. So I just don't suggest doing that. Okay, let's touch on pork rinds for a second. There's only a couple brands here. We've got, uh, regular epic pork rinds, we've got epic oven baked pork rinds, and then we've got 4505. Okay, so personally, as far as flavor goes, I love, love, love these uh, 4505. They taste really good, and it's pretty hard to screw up a pork rind, in my opinion. Um, these are like very cloudy, like they're very puffy, very cheesy, but pork rinds, cheddar cheese powder, which is not the greatest stuff, jalapeno powder, organic sugar, uh, fried and rendered pork fat. The nice thing about pork rinds is the fatty acid profile of pork is not too bad. So you're actually getting a decent abundance of, believe it or not, monounsaturated fats that are coming through in this, not just saturated fats. Uh, the nice thing though, those are hardcore fried. If you get the epic oven baked ones, look at this, 40% less fat. And you might be thinking, well, I'm keto, I want a bunch of fats. No, not necessarily, okay? You, you wanna be low carb and you wanna have the fats in the mix, but you don't need to add extra fat just for extra fat's sake, okay? So look at the calorie difference, okay? Not a huge, huge difference, but the fat difference, two and a half grams of fat versus four and a half grams of fat. Remember, at the end of the day, fat is still going to go to fat easier. What that means is when you consume excess amounts of fat, excess, it's going to store as fat easier than extra protein or even extra carbohydrates. So no, so no matter what, you just have to be paying attention to your fat intake, keto or not. So let's go ahead and let's get, let's still get one of these. Uh, let's actually just get this. Yeah. And the last thing I want to look at is take a look at some of the cookies. Some of the sweet stuff. 
Um, people talk about Quest cookies all the time, so let's break these down. We fall into the same ballpark. Protein blend, milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate, then butter, cream, that's not too bad. But then we go straight into soluble corn fiber, erythritol, palm oil. That trifecta right there is kind of a scary mix in terms of bloating. Um, nine grams of fiber. Okay, so that's not too bad. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't think that it's something, it's pretty processed, highly processed. So I'm probably not gonna get one. Actually, I will get one of those just for the sake of just having it. Okay, these Lenny and Larry's, you see them everywhere. And they're supposed to be the complete cookie because they're plant-based and supposed to be healthy. But when we actually look at what's in them, enriched wheat flour, it's just a cookie. Enriched wheat flour. Okay, they add some chicory root fiber in there to give it a little more fiber, great. But then they have their protein blend, which is wheat gluten. They consider that a protein blend because it's got amino acids in it. That's just nonsense. And it, it's a cookie. It's not a healthy cookie. Okay, but here's what they say. Okay, 16 grams of protein because it's coming from gluten. 10 grams of fiber because it's coming from chicory root fiber. Non-GMO, that's cool. No soy, that's cool. No dairy, no egg. I, I would much rather have a little bit of dairy and a little bit of egg than have the processed sugar and garbage that's in there. No high fructose corn syrup, give them credit there. So is it cleaner than a mother's cookie or is it cleaner than a Mrs. Fields cookie from the mall? Yes, definitely. But come on, there are so many good options out there now, you don't need to choose this. And just, it's sad, because look at, they take up like prime real estate here. Clearly they're rocking, but that's kind of a bummer for our waistlines, right? Uh, I've talked about these guys before, it looks like they just changed their label. So fat snacks, if you're gonna have a clean cookie on keto, I would say this is gonna be the way to go, honestly. And I'm not just saying that because I've worked with them before, but almond flour, okay, butter, eggs, coconut flour, palm fruit oil, non-GMO erythritol, non-GMO xylitol, natural vanilla, vegetable glycerin, which is not a big deal, lemon oil, natural lemon flavor, xanthan gum, aluminum-free baking powder, aluminum-free baking soda, sevia, and sea salt. They've actually done a really good job. Look at guys, it's a cookie. It's not going to be a health food. Let's just face it. I could sit here and say, oh, there's benefits of almonds and this and that. I'd be yanking your chain. The fact is, when it comes to cookies, at least it's cleaner. So let's grab one of those. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm gonna start wrapping this up, but let's end on, uh, there's this company called Enjoy Life, which is definitely not keto, but again, when it comes down to cookies and snacks and treats like that, I just admire the fact that they're, they're making some changes and some shifts here. What do we have in here? Uh, brown rice, okay, this isn't that clean. Maybe I'm gonna eat my words. Um, I will say their, their chocolate chips are, are cleaner. When you look at cookies, Factory sugar. Well, actually interesting, no hydrogenated. I wanted to use this as an example of hydrogenated fats that usually make the filling. But it looks like in this case, they're using probably some tapioca syrup again. And wh one, what's the consensus here? Lots and lots and lots of tapioca. Um, oh, this is cool too. So again, we could do a whole nother video just on different nut butters and stuff like that. But F-bomb's pretty cool. Nice to see them in sprouts as well. And I'm gonna have to wrap this up. I think we got a good variety of things here in the shopping cart that we can get some footage of. I think you got some good information here. But as always, make sure that whenever you're just shopping the snack section, you just have to keep it close to what you're really trying to achieve. Remember, the process stuff is going to throw you off. It doesn't matter if it fits in your macros or whatever. If your body is having to process all the stuff that's been processed, it's going to wreak some havoc on your system. So let's go ahead and let's check out. Let's pay our respects to Sprouts for letting us discreetly film here and let's head on back to the studio. This is exactly what your shopping cart should not look like, to be honest. <laughs> okay. cool. Thank you. You too. So I know I talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly there, and I walked out with a little bit of all of those, but looking at that grocery cart, even with the healthier options of just snack foods, that's not what, you should, that's not what your cart should look like, okay? Your cart should not look like a bunch of snack foods, okay? Shop the perimeter first, remember that, okay? Shop the meat department, get the things that you need, because I just spent $75 on useless snacks. I shouldn't say useless, I mean, a lot of them have their place, but the point is, is that it's easy to just overdo it 
and just load up and spend your entire grocery budget on snacks. And I can't tell you how many families I see that actually load up on chips like this. And the fact is for $75, I could have gotten some really good quality food that could have fed my family, nourished them, and then I could have gotten a couple of things, a couple of bars, a couple of bags of something, just to tide me over for when I'm going out of town or road trips or whatever. So just be realistic and make sure that you're making the best decisions for you. And as always, if you have ideas for future videos or any other kind of things you wanna see in the way of grocery hauls, put them down below in the comments section, and I will see you soon.